Hey, what's up, everybody? Doran Aldana here, coming at you with the one and only Tyshawn Young for a very unique and special episode of our Art of Mortgage Marketing podcast. And uh, I just want to, first of all, tell you that I have a very special human being here with me today. She is a very bright light. And uh, as you're about to discover, she is extraordinary in more ways than one. Uh, she's had a lot of experience in the mortgage industry, uh, the good, the bad, and the ugly, everything in between. And she's seen her share of failures and successes. I think you're going to be very inspired by her story. In particular, we're going to share how Tyshawn Young doubled her income from six deals a month to 12 deals a month and beyond in just three months, just three months, doubling her production, doubling her volume, doubling her income in just 90 days without making a single cold call, I might add. And those of you who hate cold calling, you're definitely going to want to sit on the edge of your seat and tune in because you're going to love Tyshawn's story, especially considering everyone and their dog is chasing after realtors right now, doing it the hard way, cold calling. And if you hate cold calling, you're going to love this alternative approach. It's going to be refreshing. It's going to be inspiring. And it's going to galvanize you guys into action like never before. So, Tyshawn, it's such a pleasure and a joy to have you here with us today. Thank you for having me. Yeah, it's just really, really cool to be able to be here live and to share your story. And so why don't we kick things off with uh, you just sharing a little bit about your background, how long you've been in the business, where are you located, uh, and uh, just give people a little bit of a scoop on, uh, you know, your origin story, if you will. Okay. Um, Tyshawn Young, I'm based in the Katy Houston market in Southeast Texas, um, producing branch manager and um, just opened a new branch in December 1st of 2021. So um, this has been a year of building technology, getting coaching, um, putting a marketing plan in place. I had done zero marketing um, since I entered the business in 2018. And um, I entered the business literally cold calling uh, lending tree leads. And uh, my first six months aged leads, no doubt. They hand you the 8,000 that nobody else could get in touch with. Right. Convert these. Um, I licensed in May of... In fact, my Texas license came through May 28th at the end of the business day. I, um, in 2018, I closed two deals in June, six in July, and I used every single cold call lead to create two realtor relationships. They had no idea that I was new into the business and I didn't tell them. Right. If they don't ask, you don't tell, right? That's exactly rule number right. one. I was very, I had lots of life experience, but that was a career change for me in my forties. And so, um, I acted like I knew everything and the whole fake it till you make it. And if I didn't know the answers, I went and found the right answers so that I didn't mess anything up. Right. Um, <laughs> took off very quickly. Um, in that first six months, um, of 2018, everyone said I joined a team of 12, um, by the fourth quarter. I was the only one left. <laughs> and it was wow. like, you're not supposed to be able to sell. It's a rising rate market. And I'm like, I don't know the difference in a rising rate market versus this. I'm just selling. Like people are still buying houses. I didn't know we were supposed to lay down just because the rates went up. Um, right. I was referral based by my second year, but quickly found that keeping up with 200 agents that were a lot of hobby agents doing one to three deals, five deals a year. Um, I was teaching them how to do their job in between transactions because it'd been so long since they put a contract together, they forgot how. And I thought right. they're earning the commission and I'm doing their work for them. This is not the type of agents I want to work with. Um, but I stayed there not knowing what that alternative would be and what that would look like for a very long time. Um, I had great relationships. I had some great partners, but I had hundreds of partners. And in any industry, we know the 80 20, you've got 20% of them that are really sending you 80% of the business. And That's I continued right. to nurture all of these hobby agents and part time agents, or, you know, the ones that are quick to tell you, I've been in the business 20 years. And I'm like, great. And you've done five transactions. That means nothing to me. <laughs> Yeah, that's that's not going to bode well if you hit your wagon to a bunch of those, right? Exactly. 
So I went about it the hard way. I did what everybody else did. I added every agent. It's like it was a collection. Add every agent you can add. Um, Anyone with a pulse who could fog a mirror who exactly. calls himself. You got a license. We need to be doing business together. <laughs> and right. So um, I got exactly what I asked for. Every breathing person with a license that wanted to do business with me because I would keep them on their toes and keep them from making mistakes because I learned to do their business to make sure they didn't make me look bad in a transaction. Um, but I also found that in order to manage my own production and to train the loan officer apprentices that I was training, I was sleeping three hours a night. And I realized that I've been doing this the hard way. I can't keep doing it the hard way. I had no marketing. I had no tech stack. Um, I was starting from ground zero and I was leaving my company after a merger that did not go so well, was not happy with the uh, ethics of the new company that took over. So that, that's the gentle way of saying it, right? Yes. So, uh, <laughs> I said, okay, fresh start, fresh company. Let's do this and do it the right way. I stepped out. Uh, after having major surgery, November 8th, I opened a new branch December 1st and I decided to get serious about how I did it. I went with the best tech stack. I went and learned everything I could learn from that regard. What am I bringing to the table? What do I have to offer these realtors? And then I found Doran. Uh, when I work at night, I'm looking for the podcast. I'm looking for the education. I'm looking to, to grow and learn. And um, when I entered your program, Let's pause just for a moment before you talk about entering the program, because there's so much you just shared there that people could connect with, yeah. you know, chasing realtors, anyone with a pulse of Kafaga mirror, uh, the uh, struggle bus of having to deal with all these low producers that do one, two, three deals a year, let alone per month, and having to rely on these low producing realtors. And then especially now with the market shift and all those people, they were fat and happy last year. And now they're all freaking out, wondering how they're going to pay the bills. Many of which have already left the business. You can imagine that's causing a wake of suck for a lot of loan officers that have hitched their wagon to those kind of realtors. And of course, everyone is back into, uh, you know, the grind of cold calling realtors, many of which uh, are, you know, loathing it because, you know, they're having to kiss butts and grovel for business and, you know, who in the right mind likes to cold call. So these are a lot of the things that you did starting out. Let's rewind the tape for a moment. What for you was the, you know, you mentioned that you were sleeping three hours a night. I can imagine, I, I can imagine that one night, maybe one night a week or one night a month, but to have that be a normal, like that's a special kind of suck right there. That's hell on earth, not having sleep like that yeah. night after night. Tell us about what was the most potently painful part about living in that day to day, being in that struggle bus day to day and, you know, not really knowing how to solve it. What, what was the, uh, you know, the most uh, soul sucking, painful part of just living in that day to day when you were in that, if you can recollect. I know it doesn't seem like it was that long ago, but, you know, it was uh, now just uh, probably uh, eight months ago, 12 months ago that you were in that place yeah. and, uh, you know, what was it like? Take us back there. So I was calling on these people and I was spending a lot of time and investing a lot of time in them, was not seeing the return on investment. Um, so it wasn't an efficient use of time. Um, it became what should have been very valuable time and I should have been gathering um more referrals from, I, I was busy listening to them complain about why their business wasn't doing something. And then when realtors aren't doing business and a lender calls them, their natural instinct is they're calling to ask me for a deal and I have nothing going on and I'm embarrassed. So I'm just going to stop answering the phone. And right. that's where I saw people. We have no inventory. How does she think I have business for her? How would you, you know, um, I've been very blessed that I've developed good relationships that I did not have to be that person that called every Monday asking for a deal because I stayed in constant contact with all my realtors and I always knew what they had going on. And there was some loyalty there. They just weren't necessarily all the right realtors. Right. And um, that was the game changer for me is it's not how many can you collect? It's the quality of how many connect 
There's yeah. a novel concept, right? Quality yes. over quantity. Very novel and concept. That, especially considering way, all the only way oh, I ahead. get my sleep back and my life back and restore quality of life and avoid burnout was to turn the business upside down and do it completely different than I had done it for four years. Like mm -hmm. scratch everything you've done because we're not doing that anymore. We're not cold calling and we're not collecting agents for the sake of agents. You know, you go in a business, you see their business card, you pick it up and you enter them into your spreadsheet and you start calling them. I don't do that anymore. I don't have to do that anymore. And thank God. <laughs> yeah, the spraying and praying method uh, yes. tends not to work very well when it comes to quality. It might work fine for quantity if you're going for the, you know, bottom feeding, you know, whining, sieving, complaining, jelly, donut eating, low producing realtors. But if you want to go for the top dogs, the top caliber, the top quality, that tends not to work very well. The sniper method tends to work a lot better. So tell us now a bit about uh, what, what was your deepest fear when you were in the midst of the shit, so to speak, and you were not sleeping and you're working with all these low producers and you weren't getting the income and the production, the consistency that you wanted, and you're busting your hump, putting in all these hours. What was your deepest fear in that kind of dark night of the soul, so to speak, prior to uh, landing on Planet Prosper with us? I came from a place of service and I had marketed myself as and I found that I was taking on the very persona that allowed people to take advantage of me and my time. Um, my salutation when I'd close an email would say working for you or um, at your service. And I found that I was creating a lack of boundaries. I was making myself accessible. I was responding to emails at 10 o'clock at night and 2 a.m. in the morning. And and so I created that environment that took away my quality of life. And the way to get it back was to not be the person that's at their disposal, but to be so important that they respect my time and the value of that time. And I work more efficiently and I work with people who understand the value of my time. And what so do you think the fear was underneath that, that had you emailing people back aside from the fact you couldn't sleep, which obviously usually comes with having anxiety, worry, fear. Yeah. Uh, what do you think the, the fear was underneath that was driving you to, uh, you know, pander to anybody with a pulse that could fog a mirror to respond to emails at two in the morning to not even be able to sleep because you're in that anxiety state. What do you think was underneath there for you? That was your deepest fear. I think for the longest in being in this industry, it was, um, I'm told how fickle real estate agents are and how they're not loyal and you've just got to be in their face all the time or they're going to forget you exist and mm -hmm. you have to make yourself known. You have to be indisposable, irreplaceable. And um, I found that, yes, that's true for some agents because they only have one deal. They want you to treat their deal like it's your only deal. Right. But the professionals in the industry saw things differently. And my fear was if I start to place value on my time and limit when they can reach me, what's going to keep them from calling the next loan officer that's hungry and willing to answer that call at 9 p.m. at night? And so it was, if I'm not at their disposal at all times and 100% accessible, what if they go with another lender? What if they go with someone who is that person that has no life and don't have three children they're caring for in a household and, you know, cooking meals and extracurriculars and things like that. Um, so it, the fear was if I have the balance in my home life, Am I sacrificing the production? How do I get mm. both? I want to have my cake and eat it too. What does that look like? But in this industry, we're brought up that, oh, it's one or the other. You don't get right. both. And you can't have you your cake and eat it too. You showed me that I can and that it is possible. And so mm. I had to stop thinking like I need them and recognize they need me. What yes. do I bring to this? And as long as I bring more to the table than they do, I hold the power position. The value lies with them having a relationship with me, not the other way around. And that right. shift of power 
has been the game changer 100 percent. But I had to first change my mindset. That's right. And you did that. You're like, is your time valuable? Well, well, no. Is your time valuable? Yes. You know, and how valuable? Let's assign a dollar amount to that. How valuable is your time? Right. And so you forced me to see you and your team forced me to see what activities were not money making activities, where I needed to focus, how to set up my day and how to take back control where I wasn't just at everybody's service and trying to juggle everybody's deals and keep everybody happy and answer everybody's question immediately and that everything was urgent and every email was right now, right now, right now. And I was imposing all that stress on myself. Right. It was very detrimental to my health. And I found that when I switched to the power position, I didn't have that same sense of urgency. And I was able to objectively classify what is priority, what is not, what is important, what is urgent, what is both urgent and important and assigning importance and value to the things that I value, not just what my clients needed. So the restoration of quality of life without sacrificing production is possible. Yeah. And isn't it interesting because none of us get in the mortgage business because we want to be like a guinea pig in a guinea pig wheel, pandering to everyone, butt kissing, chasing, being up at two in the morning, responding to emails and grinding our life away, burning the candle at at both ends, having no life, having no quality of life, having no quality of time with the family and being on burnout mode. Like that's never, I've never asked a mortgage professional, why did you decide to get in the mortgage business? They never tell me that's the reason why, right? Chances are it'll never happen because the reason why you get in the mortgage business is for more freedom, more autonomy, more independence, better quality of life. And then somehow along the way, we get acclimatized and conditioned to these erroneous presuppositions that we have to pander, that we have to always be available, that we have to tout that we're available 24-7. And we stand on this one-legged stool of a unique selling proposition saying, you know, I'm going to communicate. I'm always going to be here. I'm always available. You call, I'm going to answer. And then we end up being the bitch to these realtors, not even realizing that's what we're signing up for. And then we wonder why the lifestyle sucks. And we wonder why we're always in freak out mode and always in burnout mode. So, you know, there's these insidious beliefs that start to creep in and it's not your fault. It's not anyone's fault uh, why it happens. It's just the conditioning of the norm. You know, it's just the it's the. the, the conventional thinking that produces conventional results. Follow the herd, you're going to get those herd-like results, which ultimately, is, as far as I'm concerned, is mediocrity. So you are suffering from that mediocrity, easy for me to say, mediocrity mind that was just seeping in there through the ethers just by watching and listening to what everyone else is saying and doing. And you just kind of are, of course, as a human being, we're prone to follow the herd and we're prone to be conditioned by our surroundings. So here you are now trying to get a breakthrough, trying to break free from this guinea pig wheel and trying different things to no avail. Tell us about some of the things and so-called solutions that you tried that um, either you invested time and or money in that uh, was touted as the solution, but ended up falling short. Tell us a little bit about that before we pivot into, uh, you know, what happened when we got together and the impact that made. Okay. Um, so I had those mentors and that conventional way of thinking saying, you know, if it was easy, everybody would be doing it. It's this job's not meant to be easy. And I'm thinking, but it doesn't have to be this hard. There's got to be a more <laughs> efficient way to go about this. Right. Right. And um, I had made really great money, but it came at a very high cost. And that was time with my family, my health. You know, it was very high cost and things I can't recover or get back. So um, I tried appointment setters. I tried lead generation companies that were going to set the appointments for me. And um, I spent tons of money on different lead sources, all of which were the same old, same old. Everybody wants 100 percent financing. Nobody has cash. Everybody wants a home. You know, how are you going to make this happen for me? Oh, yeah, my credit's 560. You know, um, good luck with that one. Yes. And so (laughs) can that person buy a home? Not right now. But 
what did I do? I was at your service, walk them through it, set them up on a budget, on a credit repair service. And I nurtured them and I'd wait the 18 months to get them there. And um, I spent tens of thousands of dollars on lead solutions, appointment setters, um, different marketing campaigns, ads, um, even, you know, ad share agreements and lead share agreements with partners that were useless, quite frankly. Like Zillow or or Realtor.com, et cetera, et cetera. Zell Mortgage, Zell Media, you know, dozens. And doing it the hard way. Unfortunately, yes, that's, that's what and we're I'm signing thinking. up for when we do that. Doing it the hard way, sifting through yeah. a mountain of gravel just to find a few gold nuggets. Absolutely. Right? And I wasted not, a lot of time and a lot of money and a lot of energy. And when I found your program, what stood out to me was you train people to do things differently. I wasn't hearing the same thing that every coach tells them to do. And I love your term and I use this all the time and it makes realtors laugh every single time. And it's your loan leech comment. It's one of my favorite things to integrate. It's one of the first things out of my mouth in the first 20 seconds I'm on the phone. The first thing I say to them, I tell them who I am and I'll say, before you hang up, I want you to know I am not a loan leech that's calling to ask you for business. In -hmm. fact, it's quite the opposite. I self-generate my own leads. I have qualified fully underwritten buyers ready to shop. Mm-hmm. And I'm choosing who I place those referrals with. Boom. Oh. And I'll tell them, I have never been that person that calls and asks you for business. And I never intend to change that in my business today. Wow. You have the capacity for more buyers and sellers. And I stopped their immediate objection that they would have in those first 10 seconds Right. Let me tell you what I'm not. Before I tell you what I have and what I am, let me tell you what I'm not. Because I know what they're thinking the minute they pick it up and they see that it says Gold Star Mortgage. They're like, oh, great. Another one of those. Yeah. The 10th one today. And it's only halfway through the day. Right. (laughs) Where were these people last year and the year before? Oh, they were picking the low hanging fruit with refis. And now all yep. those refi crabs are crawling out from underneath their refi rocks yep. and banging on my door every freaking day, right? Exactly. So, um, you know, the reason why this is so powerful, and I, I just want to camp out on this for a moment. It's not just what you're saying, Tyshawn. It's how you're saying it. It's the certainty you're bringing. It's the mojo. It's the confidence. I mean, it's just oozing out of your pores. Have you already always had that confidence or was there something that shifted for you that really gave you the ability to own that at a much deeper and more powerful and congruent level? Um, I've always had the mindset that I can do anything I set my mind to. And it's um, learning education. Um, I don't watch a lot of entertainment type television. I don't read fiction. I read books that will help me learn something, teach me how to do something or be better at something I already do. Mm. So um, you're a lifelong student. Yes. Never too cool for school. That's Tyshawn Young. Never too cool for school. (laughs) Um, So, but when you're starting something new, you've not ever done before, like with your program, um, I thought, okay, this is completely different than anything I've ever done. And the only thing I have to go on is what this guy's telling me and what his team is telling me has worked. So got over a hundred thousand agents in my market. What if I screw up on a couple big deal, move on. Mm. But you taught me something that I've not been good at is I usually learn everything there is to know about it. Then I go do it. Right. And you told me an imperfect start was better than sitting stalled in the parking lot. And I thought right. I might make some mistakes, but at least I'm taking action. Yes. And there are a lot of agents out there and there's probably going to be some grace, even if I do make some mistakes up front that I can recover from. Um, right. Fortunately, I didn't mess any up. So um as I started making these calls from a power position and I said to them, you know, 
my opening was quickly to say, let me tell you what I'm not. Yeah, that's the pattern I'm, interrupt, right? I'm not so calling to ask you. Right service. between the eyes with the mallet. This is who exactly. I'm not. I'm going to shut mallet. down every possible objection you have to taking my call in the first 10 seconds. I'm not a lone range. I am not calling you for business. I am calling you with a question. Do you have the capacity for more buyers and sellers? Right. And um, they're like, yeah, 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 you know. Yeah, I do. Or and some will, they'll even fool you because they still think they're being sold. So they're like, right. yeah, I'm busy enough. I have, you know, I have my own lead stuff going on. I'm, I'm, I'm really good where I'm at. Great. So you're making as much money as you want to make now and you don't want to make any more. Well, well, you know, and you just start to kind of break <laughs> down those walls. It's like your no was not no that you don't have capacity. It's no, I don't want to be sold by another loan officer. I don't want to listen to another right. pitch. That's so right. I, I quickly rolled into what I had to offer. And I noticed in your program, there was a lot of people who were new and didn't have that confidence, but you and coach Pete are able to instill that confidence and remind them that, Hey, you have the experience that of all of us around you. If you don't have the answer, you have a resource to get the answer. So That's don't right. be afraid to ask the questions just because you don't know the answers. Um, but I also had put in place, I knew I had my own database. I knew I had a great reputation. Um, I knew my product line. I knew my tech stack, my post-closing um, services I had to offer them. I knew about the, the testimonial engine that your team introduced in and what that could do to transform their referrals and um, solidify all those reviews in one location, because we know realtors change brokerages and they move around and this is on their website, but now they no longer have it, or this was internal and now they no longer have it. And so the big piece of that, which is not even its sole purpose was in my generation, I don't walk around on social media. So one of the biggest gains I got from that tool was being able to sit down once a week or once a month and plan all of those social media posts. And I only have to design it once and it's dispersing and reformatting to five different social media platforms and pushing that out at a scheduled date and time. That was huge for me. And for those yeah. of us who are in this in this business and we're not part of that younger generation that is 100 percent in on all of those things and doing it every day and have that knowledge. That was a huge game changer for me. Yeah. Um, collecting my reviews in one place so that the public could see it. And regardless of where I go or where I put my license, that goes with me. I'm right. building my name, my brand. And so those are tools that are lifelong tools. And even if you are that person who's spending a lot of time on social media, I'm going to tell you, you could do a hell of a lot more if you'd get on the phones talking to realtors or on Zoom calls doing discovery and streamline all your social media through testimonial engine and don't stop browsing everybody else's stuff. Get on the phone but you can still have your presence there. You can still keep your feed well fed and things running without you physically having to be sitting there doing that all day, every day. Right. So, but of course we don't know what we don't know that we no, don't know. Right. So no idea. in the meantime, no we're idea. paying a hefty tuition, as I like to call it a hefty tuition to the university of not knowing, not knowing yes. how to streamline your social media, not knowing how to structure your day for maximum productivity, not knowing how to attract the top producing realtors with a kick-ass value proposition and to be able to attract versus chase, not knowing how to get them eating out of your hand and having a positioning where you become irreplaceable and indispensable, where they send you all their business all the time. We just don't know what we don't know. So we just kind of throw yogurt to the fan, hoping something sticks. And uh, more often than not, it doesn't stick. And so you're speaking from, you know, having now just over three and a half, four months on Planet Prosper. And obviously it's been a whole new world for you, a whole new trajectory and a whole new future. We'll get into that in a moment. But, you know, you're coming from that place of having the lights turned on. Most people are still in that dark, damp cave 
and they just don't know what they don't know. So let's come back to that pivotal moment where, you know, you're on the struggle bus, you reach out to us for help. We have an honest conversation. We shine the light of truth on your situation. It was a rather uncomfortable conversation at times because we really just get real about your situation because we know we can't change our reality until we face our reality. Yeah. So, you know, I'm sure you re recollect some of those moments in that conversation. And then we got to the point where it's like, okay, it's time to say, screw it, let's do it and pull the trigger and not just talk about it, but walk about it and feel the fear and do it anyways. Tell me and tell the rest listening and watching, what was, you know, your biggest fear that you had to step through, feel the fear and do it anyways, the fear you had to step through to be able to say, screw it, let's do it. And to launch onto Planet Prosper, because I know that took something for you. What was your biggest fear and how did you get past it? Um, I had a couple of different fears. Um, anytime you're investing and you've spent tens of thousands of dollars on all these other programs that have failed, you have to ask yourself, why is this one different? Why do I believe this one's different? What do I expect to get from this that I didn't get from all of these others? Um, so it's, it's the fear of just being sold, you know, yeah. quite frankly, I, I was skeptical. Um, the second fear was, um, I've got this new branch. I've brought on these team members with me. They're counting on me. Uh, if I fell again, are they going to think, I don't know what I'm doing mm -hmm. and that I might be not the right leader for them. Right. Um, these are people I that, call I, that I call that scratch. imposter syndrome, by the way, which I've struggled with a lot as well in my career. Imposter syndrome, mm -hmm. right? Being afraid that if they really knew the truth, then they would not follow me. They would not allow me to influence them. Yeah. So yeah. your program did something for me that you trained me to do with realtors. You essentially did a client needs assessment where you provide us a realtor needs assessment. And you forced me to look at different aspects of my business and whether I was managing those, monitoring those, or being flippant about them, quite frankly. And what I found is that you knew something about those questions when you asked them that I had not yet asked myself about my business. Therefore, there was something I could learn. And I feel that that has done the same thing for me. I've yet to get through a discovery call that I didn't have them asking me if they can go ahead and send me business, even if they don't get my VIP partnership. So if they're not selected as my VIP partner, will you wow. still accept business from me? And it's because I ask them questions from that realtor needs assessment, which is extremely thorough, a tool you provided that forces them to look at their business from a different perspective and parts of their business they've never even asked themselves questions about. Mm -hmm. And by doing that, they're like, this person knows more about what I should be doing in my business than I know. And it creates a bit of an inferiority and puts me in the power position that I know if you're not doing these things that you should, I know how to help you do them. I know the resources and the tools to help you do it. Um, and they realized then that I had something to offer that no other loan officer had offered. I had solutions. Mm -hmm. I wasn't just going to listen to you vent and say, I'm going to do it better. I'm going to do it better than your other lender. And I'm going to talk to you more. I'm going to give you oh. more notifications. No, I got to the heart of what are their three most important needs? What are their biggest problems? And how can I provide and be a part of that solution? I did have a little leverage in that I do have a large database and not every new person is going to have that. But if you are out there and you are prospecting, and you're doing business, you're going to have referrals that come back to you with the proper follow up and the proper CRM and the proper drip campaigns and doing the things that this marketing program has you doing. You don't have to have them yet, but you know they're going to come. So when you ask them, when was the last time your lender sent you a deal that closed and funded? I, and I'm telling you, out of hundreds of realtors, I've had two that have said one and another one that said two. 
And of wow. the one that was two, one was him and one was his kid. <laughs> okay. That should give you guys a little bit of a glimpse into the fact that it doesn't take much to stand out. You know, chances are if you've done yeah. this interview yourself with a dozen or two dozen realtors, you'll find the same to be true. And as I like to say, in the land of the blind, the one-eyed man is king. It doesn't take much to stand out, right? But unfortunately, most people just don't know how to actually bridge the gap between the idea that they need to be unique and actually having compelling uniqueness from the realtor's perspective. It's one thing for you to think, yeah, you know, I got great loan programs. I got great rates. I got great service, blah, blah, blah. But so if the realtor, everybody like, else. the realtor is like beyond <laughs> snoozeville, yeah. that doesn't help yeah. you much, right? Yeah. So tell me, let's rewind the tape just a step again for a moment and just go to the initial kind of launch phase after you said, screw it, let's do it. And you joined us here on Planet Prosper. And then it's like, buckle up, seats in the upright position is go time. And you're diving into the modules and you're diving into the Q&A calls. And it's time to actually implement and get engaged. What were maybe one or two, three things that we asked you to do or told you to do, recommended for you to do that maybe seemed a little weird, a little, you know, unorthodox, a little crazy that you perhaps were a little skeptical about? You may not have told us that because, you know, you're coachable and you're in it to win it. But in your own head, you're like, really, really, Doran, really, Coach Pete, you're really going to get us to do that. What was that, you know, skeptical try that you made? that was kind of having you feel like this is kind of crazy, but okay, I'll do it. Since I ponied up the dough, here we go. So to begin with, I was drinking from a fire hose. <laughs> and then, so right. um, I, I, I couldn't take notes fast enough and reread and re-listen. And I always sit and take notes the first time I go through a module, but then I listen to it the next morning while I'm getting ready. And um, then I try to listen to it at least once while I'm commuting and doing other things so that, you pick up more with each thing. Um, the bombardment is what I, I called it at first. Like, okay, <laughs> we're going to go from these people, maybe not ever have having heard my name to a call, a text and an email and, you know, bam, 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 all at once. And they're going to go block, 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 block. <laughs> right. and I thought, how on earth is this going to make, you know, uh, the impression I need to make. And so I was very nervous about coming on that aggressive because I was going after 20 plus buyer side agents right out of the gate. Like I've done the top these, these 10 or fewer a year for long enough. I, I want people who are really doing business and looking at it this year, it was really unique because there were people that used to do 40 buyer sides that were struggling to do 20. And so, um, I didn't hold back. I didn't, I didn't start at the middle. I said, you know what, if I'm going to do it, I'm going to, I'm going to go for the big ones. And so I went for the wells and I understand that some people may want to cut their teeth on a few, you know, smaller fish and, and kind of go mid grade and, and then work their way up as they build confidence. But I'm an all in person. If I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it. And if I mess, you one haven't up, noticed so by like, now, if you haven't I noticed by one, now. Yeah. I missed I one. Up, big all deal. In. Next. Next. Yeah. All so, in is the only way to win. That's exactly <laughs> right. So I, I feel like that was part of it. And then um, there was, even though I tend to be fairly confident, being new to the program and the call script and, and immediately telling them right out of the gate, hey, I'm going to decide whether or not we work together. I think that was the part that I had to practice that script a few times. You know, if I can help you make that breakthrough, great. We're going to schedule a show and tell, and I'm going to give you the resources, the tools and the accountability to get that done. Mm -hmm. But if I can't, then I'll be the first to tell you this isn't a good fit. And I was telling them in the first few minutes in that introduction that I may fire you before I ever even hire you. Right. And so um, that was a big pivot for me. I'm like, okay, I got to be okay with telling someone not only are you not hired, but you're interviewing against some other really remarkable people. And I'm only going to select two of you. And I'm, you, you may not, not even make it to round two. 
So I had to look at it and I flipped that instead of me needing a partner, I looked at it as I'm growing my team. Do I want to work with this person? I was now the one that got to make that decision. And I took that away from them right out of the gate. You think you're here to decide if you're going to work with me? Guess what? The I'm opposite going to decide is true. if I want to work with you. That's right. And that very power shift is the number one thing I credit for where I'm at now, where I have agents that say, can I get on the waiting list for one of your VIP partnerships? Because I tell them, you know, to to make something VIP, it has to be rare and it has to be something not everybody can have. Exclusive. Can you work with my team? Yes, I can pair you up with someone on my team and I will mentor that person. But to work with me, you have to bring what I bring. You, you have to bring as much to this. If you're doing five transactions a year, you're not going to work with someone who's doing 200 transactions a year. You going to work with someone who's used to doing five to 10 because I want you with someone who's doing used to doing more business than you because they're going to help you grow. And as you grow, then, you know, you might move up. But I tell them people shift in and out. People come in and out of this business. Some people are, you know, they have life situations that change where they're at. And as an opening comes available, I'm going to look in-house first. And so just because you don't get this VIP position doesn't mean that you can't be a VIP partner, but there's some steps and some growth that needs to happen. And we're going to help you get there. And you will decide how quickly you get there, but we're going to give you the tools and the resources and that sort of thing. But I'm not going to invest hours of my time trying to develop someone who may be complacent and content with five deals a year. Right. I want those smart, ambitious, growth minded realtors, as you describe them, or they're not ever going to be VIPs. So I explained to them, you know, you have to graduate through the tiers to get to this level. And I don't work with just everybody. You know, I'm I'm very blessed that I have a great reputation and I didn't come by that accidentally. And so I'm Correct. very careful who I co-brand with. I'm careful who I align myself with. And I need the quality of my partners to match my quality. And oh, so wow. the goal is to get you there. I want you to get there. I want to have tons of VIP partners, but the very term in and of itself is VIP, meaning a select few. Yes. hundred percent. What's unique about you in particular, Tyshawn, is that you don't just kind of consider the idea of exclusivity, consider the idea of flipping the script. So the realtor needs you versus you needing them. You don't just consider the idea that, you know, you need to own this identity own this positioning to your core you like you say you go all in and that's one of the things that makes you such a joy to coach is your all in this right to be able to take the concept and then to integrate it and to apply it not just in a half ass way but in a full ass way such that you know just a little thing like the concept of having exclusivity the concept of you need me more than I need you, the concept of picking and choosing who you work with and who you allow into your VIP team, that concept is not just a concept anymore. It's who you are. It's integrated into who you are and I can feel it. Everyone else can feel the congruence, the authenticity that you own it. And that's why it's been such a little hinge that's opened up such massive breakthroughs for you. So let's talk about those breakthroughs. It's only been literally three and a half, four months since you landed on Planet Prosper. What has transpired? You were doing about six deals a month when you were on the struggle bus before, hardly sleeping, stress mode, grind mode, chase mode. What's happened since then? What's the difference that uh, this has made so far in terms of your results? Um, Well, I have doubled my team, not just my production. So uh, that allows me, I keep a a five deals per person ratio. Um, So for every warm body that I add and every valuable team member that I add, 
I should be able to do five more deals and maintain the same level of service and five star review. Mm-hmm. So um, it's my way of saying controlled growth. Um, if I try to do go from six transactions to 15 transactions a month, my service is going to fall off and all that work that I put in there and all that value that I established up front is diminished. Um, so, yes, I am all in, but I also commit to uh, keeping my service where it was, whether I'm doing six deals, 12 deals, 15 deals. The level of service to my clients should not shift or change regardless and so to do that, I recognize the need to add to my team and to create the, the loan assistance on the front end from an origination standpoint. Um, but my business is doubled. But more than that, the type of business I'm doing has changed. How so? Um, I'm not doing desperate deals. I get to pick not just who I work with from a realtor perspective. I get to pick who I work with from a client perspective. And that's not to say I don't do tough deals, but there are um, low profit, high maintenance deals that you can jump through the moon for. They need 100 percent financing. They have very little cash to bring to the deal. They don't make a lot of money. DTI is a concern. Cash to close is a concern. You know, you have all of these limiting factors and they want to buy a three hundred thousand dollar house and you can approve them for one hundred and eighty. And live experience yesterday, I kid you not, I had a lady tell me she's like, um, I'm going to have to withdraw my application and decline your offer of two hundred and twenty five thousand dollars because I don't think I can find the house I want for that price. I'm like, OK. OK, um, if that's what you choose to do. <laughs> yeah. And I was OK with it because I recognized that. This person didn't understand, regardless of how many times I walked them through the limiting things that they had against them in today's market and with where rates are and with where sellers mindsets at and um, the neighborhood they wanted to be in and the price point they wanted to be in with the income that they have that I can't physically change for them. Um, And it's okay because in my new mindset, I recognize if you're trying to serve every client, you're not doing them a service. So um, I implemented the right fit. That wasn't the right fit. And I explained to them, you know, perhaps another lender has a better fit for you. And I was okay with that. Um, When you're on that struggle bus, you take every deal regardless of how hard it is and regardless of whether or not it's a coachable client or someone who understands what they actually bring to the table and what they can actually do and that will trust the knowledge and experience that they've come to a professional for or the ones that are just going to throw it out the window and act like I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> You've bought zero houses. I close over 200 deals a year and right. you know more than I know. We're probably not a good fit. Right. And what a profound yet powerful place to operate from in contrast to the opposite, right? Where you're begging, you're pleading, you're groveling, you feel a sense of obligation, maybe even a moral obligation to serve everyone with a pulse who could fog a mirror because they're the client and you're the service provider. And we're kind of taught and it's beat into us that the client's always right. I think that's the biggest pile of hogwash that's been (laughs) taught in the business world, that the client is always right. Who freaking taught that? I mean, If you operate from that mindset, that means that you are the bitch to whatever client wants to give you their whim, their wish, and you have to pander to whatever their whim and wish is, even though you got into business for yourself to have autonomy, independence, freedom, to live life on your terms. And yet that belief flies in the face of it. And that's the rub. And that's why so many of us remain stuck in the struggle bus in that cul-de-sac of frustration because that paradigm does not jive with freedom. It certainly does not jive with working smart versus just working hard. What difference has that made to you? Not only to be able to have the ability to pick and choose the caliber and quality of the partners you wanna roll with, that you have the right synergy with, that you have the right chemistry with, that are battery chargers versus battery drainers, 
but also to be able to have the power to attract a higher percentage and a steady stream of the best caliber, what I would call as dream clients, right? They got their poop in a group financially, they got the down payment, they've got the income, they got the credit, they got the compliance, they got the coachability, they got the gratitude, they've got the proclivity for repeat and referral business, they're thankful, they give you a five-star review. Like what's what's it like to be on the other side to actually have the power to have that kind of caliber client? and to be able to pick and choose and only work with those versus anyone with a pulse that could fog a mirror? Stress level, blood pressure. Mm. Um, the joy has been restored in being in this business. I love helping mm. people. It's naturally, um, I, I naturally come from a place of service and acts of service, but I now am more selective who I service and how many people I service because I recognize that if I'm burnout and I'm exhausted, I'm not delivering great service to my partners or to my clients. And I give equal service to my partners as I do my clients where we, it's easy to get in this rut of only serving your realtors and you're not really taking good care of your clients or you take really good care of your clients, but you neglect your realtors and then you don't understand why they don't send you more business. So um, by limiting who I work with, I can make sure that they are getting nurtured and coddled yes. if need be. And that VIP treatment and service and accessibility to me, because by limiting that, I don't have to be accessible 24 seven to, you know, 200 people. I'm only accessible to 20. And what you're really speaking to is what you're really speaking to is picking and choosing who you give your gift to. So exactly. you really value yourself because if we don't value ourselves, who will? Right? Yeah. If we don't first value ourselves and the gift we bring to the world into the marketplace, being light in the darkness, if we don't see it in ourselves, who's gonna see it if we don't see it? Right. So you right. owning that gift that you are to the world, to your clients, to your partners. And owning it to your core, not out of arrogance, but out of accurate thinking, out of a humble servant leader stance of knowing the gift you bring, because that's who God designed you to be. And that's your calling on your life and owning it unashamedly, unabashedly, but not going to the place where you're kind of like, you know, in this almost prideful humility where you're so humble that you throw the gift that God has given you called life and all the gifts, talents, and abilities that you've been given back in his face by not owning it, right? Mm -hmm. Often people don't really get that that's actually pride when you get to the point where you don't realize the gift you have to bring to the world. That's pride. And we often don't see that. There's a beautiful invitation to not just be the light yourself, but allow other people to be the light when you own the light that you are instead of discounting it or neglecting it or discarding it. So I just wanted to highlight that because it's really profound and powerful when you realize you have a gift to give and it's not your obligation to give it to everybody and anybody just because they show up as a client or they show up as a realtor. You get to pick and choose. One of the tenets we have here on Planet Prosper is you can have it exactly the way you want it if you don't settle. But Such a we profound. Have to, we have to we have to see that value in ourselves before we can project that value to others. If we are discounting our time by giving it up at 1130 at night, then they too discount our time because that wasn't a big deal last night. Why would it be a big deal this time? Why would it be a big deal for me to reach out to you at 530 in the morning? Because, you know, you're accessible, right? Right. So I recognize that my responsibility is I have to set those boundaries, but Correct. I also have to see my own value. And I had to see that and you guys had to help me uncover how much value I had within me and what I was bringing to the table before I could project that to the people on the other side of that phone call or that Zoom meeting or that face to face interaction, because I was always being the submissive one that I'm just here to help. How can I help instead of being a problem solver and a solution provider. And those may sound like the same thing, 
but they're not. Someone who's just here to help is you're going to decide at 930 to have your client uh, make application and you want me to work it because there's a 10 a.m. deadline to make offers the next morning. That's me helping you. But it's helping you for one transaction. I'm not helping you grow your business or be a, learn how to be a professional or how to set your clients up for a full underwrite and a true pre-approval instead of just a prequal and the right way to do business. So it's feeding them a fish versus teaching them to fish. Yes. And so what I learned is that I'm not just educating clients, but I'm educating and training my partners to do the same thing in their business, to see the value and to be able to establish value in the doing things the right way instead of chasing their clients and being at the client's back and call, well, but they want to make an offer tomorrow. Well, guess what? They should have thought of that three days ago. Let's tell Correct. them what that offer is going to look like when I hand them a prequal letter that nothing's been verified versus because yeah. in the state of Texas, we have I'm to list every, every pending condition. So is that letter, that letter's really worthless. They could call rocket mortgage and get that in five minutes over the phone. And it's not right. worth the paper it's written on. And they're wise to that. And so I'm having to train them to be better and to be of greater value in their own business. And that way we grow together because yeah. I'm showing them that you don't have to be stressed out at 1030 at night either. You just explain to him, this is the right yeah. way we go about this. I need you to get a pre-approval because in today's market, that's what sellers and listing agents require. A prequal is useless. It's a, oh, you say you make X and your debts are Y, you can afford Z. That means nothing to no one. Correct. It is as worthless as the paper it's printed on. And it's not going to win you an offer. You're going to stress yourself out tonight. You're going to stress me out. We're going to put this offer in. You're going to be emotionally engaged with this property that I know you're not going to get. Yeah. And it, we're just going to save each other a lot of heartache. And so I just tell them, you know, it's our job to educate them of where this market is and what it what is required to win, to get under contract. It's not about the offer. It's about the contract. How do we get the contract? How do we get right. the home? How do we close? How do we fund? Because Absolutely. making seven offers just wears a buyer out. Buyer fatigue is real. And it's because agents allowed people to make multiple offers on multiple properties when in fact a lot of those, and I would say probably 70% of them weren't even in a place to really make the offer they were making when they made it. And that's, right. and it was a blessing in disguise that they didn't get it because they didn't have the assets to cover that appraisal gap. And they were waiving appraisal because the realtor told them that's what they had to do. And I don't want to ever set a client up for that type of failure. I want no. them in something they can afford. I want to, I want to be able to call that listing agent and tell them everything I've done to verify everything, all the reasons why my client is a surefire close and why this should be the one you choose, regardless of whether their down payment is the highest or not. Because let me tell you, this person that says they're doing this, but nobody's verified anything. How do you even know if their assets are qualifying assets? They right. may have them, but they may have moved them from Honduras two days ago. They may be two months out from qualifying those assets. If nobody's verified that, how do you know that's not the case? Because that's, that's right. how the listing agent has to look at each deal to determine who wins in these multi-offer situations. Well, who stacks that deck? The listing agent. If you don't have a lender that's going to go to bat for you and do things the right way and call that listing agent and set you up as the best possible and the only choice they really have to accept your offer, you just waste do you guys time. hear? Do you guys hear Tyshawn's certainty? Do you feel her certainty? This is why she's kicking ass, taking names, chewing bubblegum <laughs> bubble and crushing it. The certainty that you exude. And that certainty comes from owning your call as a leader and to produce outcomes. Outcomes for yourself, outcomes for your partners, outcomes for your clients. And to not be messing around shooting blanks, not be messing around you know, having a bucket with a bunch of holes in it that's just leaking opportunity, leaking time and money and energy, wasting time, energy and money unnecessarily. So we can't give the light if we don't have the light. We can't give freedom if we don't have freedom. We can't give working smarter versus harder if we don't own it for ourselves. 
So what I'm really hearing in you, Tyshawn, is the extraordinary leaps and bounds growth you've had since you joined us just three and a half months ago. It's incredible to see that, you know, you've always been a rock star, but the way you've synthesized and applied the coaching has just been absolutely remarkable. And uh, to have you own it at such a deep visceral level is just such a beautiful thing to behold because the certainty you exude from it, like, I'm enrolled. When I hear you speak, I'm enrolled. We have a, a, a saying here on Planet Prosper called, we are merchants of certainty. And Tyshawn is the poster child of taking that tenet and applying it to her life, her business, her communication. And that's why people want to work with her. That's why our clients want to follow her. That's why partners want to partner with her because of the certainty she brings because she comes from a place of true caring, true compassion and caring, but also confidence that what she brings to the table is going to bring the best outcome for the client, the best out outcome for the partner. Is that true or not true, Tyshawn? Um, 100%. After my most recent realtor event, um, it was interesting when the people line up to speak to me afterwards. And the question is, what do I have to do or what qualifications do I need to work with you? Like how many lenders do you speak with a day that can say, that when a realtor approaches them, first of all, the realtor approaches them mm -hmm. and their question is, what do I have to do to earn the right to work with you? And amazing. It, it's a game changer. It's a Whole game changer. World. Tell me about, cause you've done this event. You had like over a hundred people at this event. You had a special speaker. People came from all over to this event. It's the first one you've ever done. Knocked it out of the park. You got realtors clamoring to want to work with you. You literally doubled your production in three months. The pipeline is growing exponentially. Tell me what's, give us a quick highlight before we wrap up. Cause I know we're already uh, over time here. What, what was the difference that made the difference that's had this avalanche of awesome for you? If you were to just highlight maybe one or two, maximum three things that was the difference that made a difference for you that had you grow so exponentially, have such a, you know, a massive, uh, you know, impact in your income, in your, you know, your free time, your quality of life, your uh, quality of sleep, uh, your peace of mind, the quality and caliber of partners and clients that you get to work with now. What has been the difference that has made the difference for you? We've touched on it, but just to crystallize for our audience, maybe one, two or three things. Um, I would say there's three things. Um, the first one being recognizing my value and conveying that when I speak to people. Um, the second one is taking charge of my day, managing my day instead of letting my day manage me being deliberate about how I spend my time and assigning values to that time blocking and that time management. Because I think in a world where we have freedom and a lack of structure, it's really easy to do the easy things and difficult to tackle the must do and the money making activities first and foremost. So I think um, placing the priority and the importance on, I do both a realtor power hour and a client power hour every day. Right. And so, uh, for some people, they may split that half an hour to realtors, half an hour to clients. But, um, I devote a full hour a day to client calls and a full hour a day to realtor calls. So I would say that is a, that goes hand in hand with the taking charge of my day and managing my day instead of letting my day manage me. And then the um, the third one is shifting the power of choice to my choice versus wow. their choice. And so I think um, the power of choice and knowing that I have a choice and that I get to make that choice, I'm not relying on someone else to make that for me anymore. What's so cool is our company name is Power of Choice Coaching. So there are no accidents why that was such a pivotal and profound shift for you. The power of choice. It has been the foundation of why we do what we do from the very first client we served over 18 years ago. And here we are almost two decades later, and it's still the 
difference that's made the difference for so many. So that brings uh, such joy to my heart. What are you most excited about now? Now that, I mean, you're just getting warmed up. You're just scratching the surface of the surface, Tyshawn. You haven't even gotten started yet. You're just getting warmed up. But what are you most excited about? What are you most grateful for at this stage in your life now that you've created such a breakthrough? Um, I think it's the legacy that I'm going to leave behind. Um, I think with each team member that I'm able to um, transition from the way everybody else does business and the old way of thinking and the each each team member that I bring on my team that I can uh, show them how they too can find the joy in this business and put the joy back in this business and not always be about the grind. Um, mm. I think that that's going to be life changing for people. And um, I think that's a, a great service and legacy for me to leave behind is if I can train other people to um, to learn that they, too, have a power of choice, whether they're new in the business or old in the business. And quite frankly, I prefer people new in the business. They come with fewer bad habits and I can train them to do it the right way from the beginning. So <laughs> but um, I think for me, it means. I don't, I'm not going to have regrets of the things that I missed with my family. I'm not going to have regrets with uh, health that's been run into the ground because I was at everybody's disposal all the time. And for me, the families and the households that are created because of the service that I provide and whether they're newlyweds or fiancés or families of 10, um, helping people that have, I have a gentleman that had rented an apartment for 11 years with a family of six and been turned down every year before he'd renew. And we found a solution for him and we put him in a house. And wow. um, I had a gentleman that had spent 23 years in jail for a crime he committed at 17, quite frankly, could have been any young man that got in a fight and it didn't end well. Um, mm -hmm. We put him in a home. We we wow. were able to make things happen. We utilized his education on the inside for work history and where most lenders didn't even try. They shut him down. They're like mm, they they were judgmental that he didn't deserve a home. I'm like we all deserve a roof over our head. Yeah. Amen. We, we aren't all designed to be homeowners because some of us can't budget or don't have the resources to maintain a home when the large expenses fall or the AC and furnace go out and things like that. There are people who don't want to have those kind of concerns. So there will always be a market for renters. But for those whose families are growing and they are out of that and they do need more space. And I want to be the solution for those folks. I want to get them in a home they not only love the day they move in, but they love six months from now and 12 months from now because we didn't overbuy. We didn't ask them to compromise their vacations and their kids' extracurriculars because they overstretched on their home. It's about yeah. putting you in the right home with the right budget and the right payment not how high can I get the sales price? How high can I make a commission? I've never counted numbers and it mm -hmm. drives supervisors crazy because I would tell them, I know I'm closing this many families this month that are going to get keys to a house and they're going to have a dream come true. And I don't count my numbers till they've closed and they've funded and I don't track my numbers that way. And I know that accountants and, and statisticians out there are cringing right now. But at the end of the day, my model has always been that if I take care of the people, the numbers will take care of themselves. And that has been true. And if I serve people and I do what's right by them and not something that's self-serving or picking a product with a larger margin or a higher sales price, then at the end of the day, they know who's working with them and who's looking out for their best interest. And that's who I want to be. The client. And that's why you're winning. And that's why you're winning. Because when people work with you, they never have to doubt that you have their best interest in mind. No pun intended. Yeah. That you're going to serve them for the right reasons. That you care to your core. Like I always like to say, you can't be half pregnant. You can't have care. Yeah. You care to your core. And that is your ultimate superpower. 
And that, that is absolutely your ultimate unique selling proposition. Truth be told is that you care so much and you care with the expression of the dust on top of outstanding and bringing excellence for excellence sake, because you care that much to care about the details and to care about how it's actually going to produce outcomes in people's lives. So I just want to honor you, Tyshawn, as we wrap up for your love for people, your passion to serve people, your caring heart, your diligence, I mean, your work ethic is second to none, but also your coachability. You showed up from day one and you emptied your cup so we could fill it with your dream. And I just can't wait to see the avalanche of awesome that unleashes in the coming weeks, months, and years ahead. Like I said, you're just getting started. You're just getting warmed up. But a man, oh man, to see the remarkable growth in not just your income, your production, your pipeline, but also just in who you are is just truly outstanding. So super blessed, grateful, and privileged to be on the journey with you. If those of you listening, watching would like to learn how to get a little of that secret sauce that Tyshawn has partaken in and has made such an impact in her life, her business, I invite you to take the very first step that Tyshawn took way back a whole three and a half months ago. And that is to just book a complimentary breakthrough call where we simply have an honest conversation. We get on the phone, either with myself or one of my consultants. We just have an honest conversation. We shine the light of truth on your situation. We look at where you're at now, where you wanna be, what's working, what's not working. If we can help you bridge the gap between where you are and where you wanna be, we'll show you what that looks like. If not, we'll be the first to advise you to pass, just like Tyshawn was saying. We have the power of choice by virtue of having total certainty whether or not we can help you or not. If we're 100% certain we can help you, we'll show you what that looks like. If we're not, then we'll show you something else or recommend something else. Either way, you will leave that meeting and Tyshawn, I'm sure would concur 100%. You will leave that meeting with massive value, massive clarity, and we may even have some fun. Unless you're not very fun, then we won't. But chances are, if you're anything like Tyshawn, it'll be very enlightening, perhaps the most clarity evoking conversation you've ever had in your entire career bar none. So if that sounds meaningful and worthwhile to you and you're ready to take a absolute breakthrough, quantum leap breakthrough in your business, working smarter, not harder, and to start to attract the right partners and the right clients, not in grind mode, not in chase mode, not in you know cold calling mode, but in attraction mode, working smart versus just hard, go ahead and book a call at mortgagemarketingcoach.com forward slash apply, mortgagemarketingcoach.com forward slash apply. And as we wrap up, Tyshawn, what would you say to someone who was is right now like you were just three, four, five months, six months ago, the previous version of Tyshawn before landing on Planet Prosper, they ponied up a bunch of dough and a bunch of substandard solutions that didn't work. They're kind of skeptical. They're like, I don't know if I want to sign up for a call because it's just going to be a sales pitch. What would you say to someone like that? That's like the previous version of Tyshawn just six months ago. What would you say to someone like that? I would say first and foremost, be honest. This is not a sales call for you to um, exaggerate your numbers or um, talk about the things you intend to do as if you've already done them. I would say the client needs assessment and the process that Doran and his team go through is to truly reveal to you what areas you need work on. And if you can't be honest with someone who's going to coach you and provide solutions, they can't provide you the right solutions. So I would say humble yourself. This is not a public conversation. Be real. Be real with yourself. And if you haven't looked at those things and you don't know the answers, be honest. You know, I don't know. I haven't I haven't kept those metrics or um I'd have to look at that. I, I don't know. No, I haven't done that. Be honest with yourself because you're never going to grow if you're sitting there pretending to be something you're not in front of the very person who has the tools and resources to help you become exactly what you intend and want to be. So I would say mm -hmm. humble yourself. Be honest in that conversation, not just with the coach or the consultant, but with yourself. Like look internally at yourself and recognize don't be pointing fingers. Well, it was my other lender. I could do this, but my other lender this. Mm -hmm. No, look here and truly reflect on your business. 
because that's where you're going to grow. If you're looking to blame someone, you're, you don't get growth from that. Uh, you'll yeah. be stagnant and nothing's going to change. You're going to keep doing what you've always done and you're going to keep getting the same negative results or tiresome cold calling and burnout. You're just going to stay where you're at. You have to invoke change by making a decision to change yourself. And there is a commitment level. If you're going to sign up for something, but then you're not going to implement what they teach you, you're wasting everybody's time. Mm-hmm. You know, be respectful of that. And Doran's consultants are going to be pretty good at determining whether or not you're really ready to make a change or not. And like I said, they'll advise you accordingly. But I would say that if you are tired of where you're at and you're not complacent, then you have to make big decisions and you have to take risk. And I say with any risk I take, I take calculated risk. What is my investment and what do I stand to gain from that investment? How many deals does it take to pay for this investment? That's going to differ for everybody. You're on different comp plans, whatever the case may be. But what does that look like for you? And be honest with yourself, because if two deals, three deals is the answer, who wouldn't invest two to three deals commission to double their business Mm -hmm. in less than a year, in less, I mean, in one quarter, like who wouldn't do that? So if you say no, my question to you is, do you really know what you want? Because you can't ask someone else to invest and trust in you if you don't invest and trust in yourself. Yeah. Profound words. And very, very well said. I'm so proud of you. Oh, thank I'm you. I'm so proud of I'm so proud of who you are. I'm so proud of the courageous heart that you have to go after your dreams, to take the risk, to go after the reward, but be willing to feel the fear and do it anyways, and to take yeah. the risk and to take extreme ownership for your life, your business, to not look without, but to look within and to know that you're the source and to pull up your proverbial bootstraps and to make it happen, but also to be willing to, uh, you know, do it bad before you do it good, you know, to seek yeah. progress, not perfection and to have a, uh, you know, perhaps sloppy or uh, messy start in the midst of all the crazy and confusion and overwhelm of learning new things. You showed up committed, coachable, resourceful, decisive every single day you showed up for us that way because that's who you are. And that's just the absolute essence of Tai Shaw Young, Tai Shaw Young, easy for me to say, Tai Shaw Young, say that 10 times fast. Um, that's who you are. And so I just honor you for that. It's been such a joy to be on the journey. Can't wait to see what blossoms out of your journey next. And um, I just thank you on behalf of our audience today for the wealth of insight, for the honesty, for the transparency, and for sharing your journey. So Super proud of you. So super grateful for you. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you so much for listening, guys. I've been with the one and only Tyshawn Young. Yes, I said it right that time. And we have been sharing her journey of how she doubled her income, doubled her production in just three months without making a single cold call by flipping the script so that the realtor needs her more than she needs them. And to be able to invoke the power of choice in her life and her business. If you'd like to take advantage of that for yourself or explore whether or not you might be the right fit for the very same program that lit an absolute rocket under Tyshawn's business, go ahead and book a call at mortgagemarketingcoach.com forward slash apply. Thanks for watching. This is Dorn Aldana coming at you with the one and only Tyshawn Young with the Art of Mortgage Marketing podcast. Be blessed. We'll see you on the next episode. Peace, y'all. Thanks for being with us.